uh, it's also fair to say that, you know, there were, there were cer- certainly, you know, great expectations when Justin Trudeau was elected prime minister of Canada that, um, based on, you know, comments he'd made during the election that, you know, China was going to be our new best friend. And, um, uh, you know, the Chinese uh, certainly remember his father, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, who was, um, uh, you know, one of the first uh, Western leaders to uh, to formally recognize China uh, back in, what was it, uh, Mike, 1970, 71. And, um, you know, Trudeau, the elder Trudeau had, you know, met with Cho Lai, he met with Mao Zedong, um, uh, and, and, you know, there was, there was, uh, you know, a real sense that, you know, China, we were, go- we were finally going to do serious business with China. China was kind of, uh, Canada was kind of late in the game when it came to, um, you know, doing business with uh, the new China. And so there were high expectations. And so I think this really caught people off guard. And, and the arrest was not, um, this was conducted by, you know, what we would call lower level officials. I mean, the senior leadership of the country was not consulted on it. Our foreign ministry was not consulted about this. Um, uh, you know, it was just, you know, Justice Department and uh, RCMP and other people kind of, oh, well, we've got this extradition request. Uh, we'd better, uh, you know, we'd better uh, arrest her when she comes through uh, Vancouver Airport. So, so I think, uh, you know, if we were to replay this picture again, um, and, uh, you know, there'd been senior uh, political involvement, uh, they might have played it quite differently. You know, Mike, you had mentioned that the Chinese officials uh, called Canada, you know, toadies of the United States. So as Canadians, how do you guys feel about being toadies of the United States? <laughs> well, we're not toadies. We're the little mouse that gets rolled over by the elephant to torture that long time metaphor that uh, Fen probably remembers who first used it, but it gets repurposed from time to time. Uh, Justin's father said, living with the United States is like a, mi- a mouse sleeping with an elephant. I'd change the metaphor. It's more like a beaver sleeping with an elephant. But. Why a beaver? It's a c- Canadian. Oh, okay. It's our national symbol. One of our national cliches, yeah. It's our national animal. And you see a beaver and you think, damn. <laughs> the mighty beaver, noble. It's interesting about this whole Trudeau father-son thing. I mean, I was in the room when Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, met Xi Jinping for the first time, and he it was in 20, late 2015. He had just been elected. He was on his first foreign trip. I think it was like a G20 summit in Turkey at some resort that had been you know, that had been turned into a high security zone. A huge delegation of people, a bunch of people on one side of the table, a bunch of people on the other side of the table, and the words out of you know, the Chinese leader's mouth, or as translated to us, were. It was basically, we are happy to meet the son of the man who engaged with China, and we were happy to try to, you know, engage with you and move forward. And I mean, and let's face it, you know, at that time, and and still even now, everybody in some way has to do business with China. You can't, it's there, it has to be done business with, every government has to have a way to move forward on that. Uh, So there was a real expectation that the table had been reset with Canada-China relations uh, on both sides including the Chinese, you know, an, an interesting aspect of this that I, that I've seen firsthand is um, the Chinese were jet were, were really, really offended and hurt that the country of you know, Pierre Trudeau, Norman Bethune, who was this, you know, doctor who, you know, saved Chinese people. He's revered as a national hero in China. You know, he was, he was all, with Mao on his long March uh, through China yeah. and, um, you know, attended to a lot of, wounded uh, compadres of, uh, of uh, Chairman Mao. And there was this sense that uh, somehow this nice little country of Canada had knifed them in the back, like giant China. So there was real indignation on that front. And, uh, and of course, the Chinese are sophisticated to know that this was an American move on them uh, through Canada. Uh, hence, you know, the, you know, your bunch of toadies and lapdogs and I think lapdog is an, an actual word that got used. It's been used by them in the foreign ministry. And, or maybe know. running dogs, running dogs of the American imperialists, something like that. No, they use the term lapdogs, lapdogs, yeah. Lapdog was the one, yeah. So, uh, 
yeah, so it, it, it turned everything on its head, um, and and that's what happened. Well, so I'm curious, since ultimately the United States had responsibility for this, why was China's anger focused pretty much exclusively on Canada? Why do you think they didn't try and kidnap two American citizens? Well, that um, that that that's actually a a, a, a good question. Uh, I think. Um, they deal with the United States differently than they deal with small powers. And so, um, you know, if Canada had been looking at our uh, Pacific uh, uh, friend, uh, Australia, and seen how uh, China has dealt with Australians, um, you know, including Australian businessmen who kind of run afoul uh, oh, uh, yeah. of, uh, of Chinese authorities, they, they throw, them in, throw them in jail without uh, uh, compunction. Uh, you know, I think they were smart enough to realize that if they'd, um, you know, gone after, let's say, some prominent American businessmen who happened to be in, in China, that, um, you know, they were already on the upward escalatory ladder in a trade war, and it would have just uh, gotten much worse because, you know, you, the United States can stick it to China. You're sticking it to China right now. It's one of the reasons, you know, why... Tariffs, uh, which are still in place under the Biden administration that uh, were uh, introduced by Donald Trump, haven't, haven't been lifted, are taking quite a bite out of uh, China's economic apple. And so, uh, you know, Canada was kind of seen as being, as Mike said, uh, duplicitous here. You know, the Chinese don't understand that there are things called extradition treaties and that you've got to, you've got to honor them when you're uh, a neighbor and uh, and an ally um and you know it's not up to canada to decide on the merits of uh, of a legal case that the justice department has brought against a foreign official who happens to be passing through our airport and the americans want to have uh, arrested uh so or extradited uh, so in this case she can stand trial in the united states so you know that you, you don't you don't have a choice generally speaking uh you know in a, in an extradition case and and so you know canada's defense uh you know for its actions all along is you know this this has been kind of the rule of law here didn't canada wasn't weren't they going to negotiate an extradition treaty with china that was on the table um prior to all of this and yep. it, uh, well, it wasn't really on the table the chinese wanted it on the table and the canadian government insisted that it wasn't on the table it never happened, but uh, the Chinese wanted it. Yeah, because there there are quite a few Chinese dissidents and those and you know prominent Chinese who you know run afoul of Chinese authorities who you know come come to Canada and and are here. So. 